بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحباب a question was asked unfortunately with the brothers on the internet and websites there is much ghulu or extremism and the brothers are hard upon one another over their differences you probably know what I'm referring to. This has made things very difficult as people take sides on individuals and are quick to call each other out. Can you give me some, some nasiha as to what we should do in such times? This is part of the question. And then furthermore in the question, the questioner went on to say, truly the times are filled with fitna and people are hard upon one another. What should we seek and from who should we seek? And we ask Allah, Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with a class with the bat and forgive us of our many sins. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen and bless us to be a benefit for us all. In fact, this requires a full lecture because it uh, and, and there's books written on this topic, but we'll be as brief as we can. The Prophet والسلام, said, ghulu. The Prophet وسلم, said, Beware of being extreme. The Prophet وسلم, also said, he said, beware of suspicion, because suspicion is the worst of speech. <clears throat> and the Prophet والسلام, let us know we would have differences. Prophet told us that the Jews would break into 71 sects, the Christians in the 72 sects, and my ummah in the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they? Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, those who are upon uh, what I'm upon it and my companions. And we already know the Sabila Salaf, that this is this is our only way of success. The Prophet وسلم, said, uh, He said, It's upon you, my Sunnah, and the rightly guided Khalifat. And the Prophet وسلم, said in another hadith, The Prophet وسلم, said that the best people are my generation. Then those who follow them, then those who follow them. And when it comes to the issue of taking sides over individuals, the ulama explained for us that one of the pillars of Hezbiyah, of falling into partisanship in groups, is making al wala wal bara based on love of individuals based upon your sheikh based upon your student of knowledge based upon your imam based upon this and that and the other meaning that he, instead of loving and, and hating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you love your sheikh because he is in accordance with the sunnah with what he's saying but instead regardless of whether your sheikh makes mistakes or your sheikh is the proof has been shown that your sheikh is no longer from ahlul sunnah or what have you the proof has been established that you still remain loving your sheikh and disliking anyone who dislikes your sheikh. And even in the situation of someone being an alam from Ahl sunnah that you have blind love and partisanship for them, even if they're correct, that you're, you make your love and your hate solely based on, on them instead of based upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the principles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. This also can lead to hizbiyah and can be a very dangerous thing. And this is what I think the issue uh, at hand tends to be, is that sometimes we see an alam from Ahl sunnah disagrees with another scholar from Ahl sunnah or criticizes him, or says he's an innovator even. And not all the scholars are in agreement on that. And that is not a condition that all the scholars have to be in agreement. I want to make that clear. But because there's a difference over this, People tend to make their love and their hatred based on this. And this is a severe mistake. And alhamdulillah, many of the ulama are trying to rectify this and they're writing books. Of course, unfortunately, for those who don't speak Arabic, some of this content is not available. But alhamd, there are many books and there are some very beneficial treaties. And I'll mention two of them really quickly that you can get in English that have been translated. One is from our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Rahayli, uh, ta'ala, called... Um, uh, advice to the 
youth of Ahl Sunnah. That's translated into English. And Jazallah Khairan to the translator. And another book that's very beneficial is called uh, is by our uh, Imam Sheikh Abdul Masin Al Muhaddith. Abdul Masin Al Abad, who teaches in the Haram in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid. And it is called Ahl Sunnah Be Gentle with One Another, or something like this, as far as the English translation. Also, you can get down that, download that right off the internet and read that, and it deals with all these issues. But to be concise, those are just some of the uh, things. And who should we take our knowledge from? We take our knowledge from, as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, states, and, and the ulama after him, and the ulama before him uh, say, but this is a beautiful statement. قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى في تقرير إجماع منضبط قال طريقة أهل السنة طريقة أهل السنة والجماعة اتباع آثار رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم باطنا وظاهرا واتباع سبيل السابقين الأولين من المهاجرين والأنصار واتباع وصية رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث قال عليكم بسنة وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهدين من بعدي تمسكوا بها وعذوا عليها بالنواجد وإياكم ومحدث الأمور فإن كل بدعة ضلالة وكل بدعة ضلالة محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was talking about the, the minhaj or the tariqa and so there are other statements that are more useful to what I'm trying to think but from this the Shaykh is talking about the minhaj that that the, the, the way of Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah is following the, uh, the narrations of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hidden uh, in secret and openly and following the path of the first from the, the, the first people from the Muhajireen meaning those people who made Hijrah uh, and meaning from Mecca to Medina well Ansar and the Ansar were the people Ahl al Medina from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Majma'een and following the uh, advice or the command of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, Khalifat after me. Adhere to, to them. Adhere to their sunnah. And uh, cling to it with your molar teeth and beware of newly invented affairs for verily every uh, innovation uh, is, is, uh, leads astray. So with regards to this, anyone who adheres to those principles, then we say they're from Ahl Sunnah. We say they're Salafi. If they follow that, then you can't dispute and say, no, he's not Salafi. Even if he makes some mistakes or what have you, then it, it takes looking at the issues that he or her has made, made their mistakes in before you take them off the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and uh, say that they have deviated and, and, and all the other rulings pertinent to that. So anyone who calls to that, then you should take from them. But let's get a little more specific in our advice. And this is something I just briefly wrote down from asking this question in various ways to many mashayikh, especially in Medina and in Yemen, because those are some of the places that I have lived in. One of the things that I recall in general, of course, is avoiding hizbiyah. Avoiding uh, partisanship. So do not make it a dawa of this is us versus them. Meaning that you're either with us or you're against us. This is very dangerous. And it's so, it amazes me that so many young students of knowledge or some of them, you know, their dua with positions in the West and so forth, they accuse people of hezbiyah, but then they fall right into this trap. And these great ulama, some of them have blessed, been blessed to study with, Let's look at Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi, Allah yarhamhu, for example, who was really known for speaking against Ahl al-Bidah. And at the same time, in so many of his tapes, he mentioned, it's not, the haq is not necessarily with us, meaning that you do not make your awla wal bara to us. We can make mistakes. And we are not, uh, we don't call you to us. As he said, this is a quote of Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi, Allah yirhamu. He said, Dawat ahl sunnah Dawat dawatun ila kitabillah, or min kitabillah ila kitabillah. 
وَمِن سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ إِلَى سُنَّةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ He said the da'wah of Ahlul Sunnah is a da'wah which is to the Quran, from the Qur'an to the Qur'an. And from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. So it wasn't to him. It wasn't to Damaj. It wasn't to this. I, that Alam Rabbani, there's so much to, to benefit from him. And may Allah bless him with genital for those and all of our ulama. Ameen. Another thing, this is imperative here, is stick with the major scholars of the time. And this I took from advice from, I, I asked Sheikh Suleiman al-Rahili, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of our mashayikh in Medina. And I asked him, I said, Sheikh, I'm going to Yemen. Can you give me some advice? And I'll excuse some of the advice because uh, in order to, for the sake of time and for the sake of not uh, blowing up dust. But the most important thing that he said in his advice, he said, whatever you hear there, he said, compare it to the major scholars of this time. And he mentioned four. He mentioned four mainly to, to, to take from. And, and I need to go back to the tape to make sure in case it was five. But what I recall, he said, he said to me, he said, take from, uh, he said, compare what you hear there in your lessons, compare to what you hear uh, from Bin Baz. He said, uh, Sheikh Al-Albani. He said, said uh, Sheikh Bin Uthaymin. And he said, Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi Al-Wadi. Allah yarhamuhum jami'an. And that was very profound and golden advice. And of course, Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan, because these are major scholars on a level, uh, especially those ones who passed on, they were, uh, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were imams and they were able to contain a lot of the fitna. And even if you see in this time, some of those great mountains of knowledge that are living, like Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan, Sheikh Lu Haydan, uh, Sheikh Abdul Masin al abad and, and, and many others, but especially I would say some of those that Allah has favored to another level of being uh, ulama that reach the world in a, in, a, in a very special way because of their knowledge and their fiqh that, and their, their rasikhun fil ilm is that they know how to deal with uh, issues and they are imams in the way they deal with. And so even you know, their, their knowledge can be benefited by all and can squash the fitna if we only pay attention and benefit from those imams. Uh, another last piece of advice I want to say, and this was from Sheikh Ayyad Shemri, and he was talking about when the fitna in Yemen, uh, unfortunately, which is well known, by Sheikh, uh, uh, or, or with, uh, between Sheikh uh, and the Maj, Sheikh Yahya al-Hujuri, and may Allah guide him, guide us in him, and forgive us in him, I mean. And the other mashayikh in Yemen, and may Allah bless us all with khair and, and forgive us of our, any of our shortcomings. He said that if the if someone from a caller to Ahl Sunnah can't get along, then this one calls in his locality, and that one calls in his locality, still spreading the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. They're, meaning that they're not always going to get along. This is unfortunate. We wish we could always be as one hand, and we should be. But the reality is there are reconcilable, un, irreconcilable differences, and I think mainly because of the desires of people, meaning that some of the people, they have aspects of hisbia, and they don't want to let go of certain issues, or they don't want to accept someone's repentance, or whatever the situation is. So they will never, and only Allah knows if they will, uh, change their position. And I've seen this with even the Arab amongst the Arabs, uh, the students of knowledge, and even some lesser mashayikh, I've seen this. It's, they have a, a kind of uh, a pride that will not let them, and this is between them and Allah, because this is not what we learn from uh, the Quran and the Sunnah of being humble and, and, and the sabila salaf, that when we make mistakes or, or what have you, that we got to reanalyze those things and we got to look and, 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 and be... Uh, and go back. The last thing I want to mention, this we asked uh, Sheikh, um, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab uh, al-Aqil, we asked him in Medina. And he said, no, uh, we asked him, we said, Sheikh, in our country, because we're talking about America and Canada primarily, and of course it applies to Britain and, and the West in general, and really the world. We said, but you know, some of our brothers, they tend to be uh, more extreme and harsh. And some of our brothers tend, you know, uh, brothers, and we're talking about people who, inshallah, are on the sunnah, are from are, are the Salafis. 
some of them tend to be more extreme and harsh, and some of them tend to be very tasaha, very easy in some of these issues. Sheikh, what, you know, how can we be on the middle course? And one thing the Sheikh mentioned, which was very ben ben beneficial and we must take to heart, he said, no doubt the people who are stern and tend to be uh, more harsh are closer to us. Why? Now, why do we say that? No matter how much it, it, it affects us. Why? Because they are striving to adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah very sternly. And the Sabil of the Salaf, by taking those narrations and clinging, they're trying. But sometimes they might not have tawfiq in the fiqh, in their understanding, or what have you, and they may go to extreme. Extreme means to go beyond the bounds. So the beyond the bounds is not considered from the Sunnah. That means you've gone beyond it. So this is a mistake. We're not saying this is a good thing. This is a mistake. But the other party, unfortunately, the mutasahirin, is they are so easygoing, they will sit with anyone. Everyone is okay. Everyone is Salafi. And everyone is this in, in their eyes. Or it doesn't matter. I will make a pact with the Sufis. And I will make a pact with the Diobandis. And I will make a pact with the Naqshbandis. And I will make a pact. And I will go with Khuruj with Jamaat at the It's okay. And, and I will uh, sit with the Takfiris. And I will do this. And Subhanallah, and, and we'll form alliances with the Shia. This is, you know, destroying the Minhaj of the Salaf, because the Salaf were so far from that. And we, this is, I've went, taken way too much time, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me, and I want to read one last statement about this, and this was uh, a statement uh, from a very benefit, beneficial book which deals with this, it's in Arabic, uh, if I can find it, and... The and it was the 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 introduction was by Sheikh Suleiman Rahili and Sheikh uh, Saleh Suhaimi. You know, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them. I, I mean, and so this uh, Sheikh or this student of knowledge who wrote this, which is incredibly beneficial, and it, the whole book is about the principles uh, of when of basically when to criticize or when to take someone off the off the minhaj of the salaf. This is the, the, the foundation of this book. But anyway, I, I can't seem to find the statement, but he basically said that, of what, basically what I just said, that uh, when you find uh, that some people are so easygoing, and as some of the people say, Tamir or Mumayya, they're so easygoing that they just throw away the principles of Ahl Sunnah and they accept and sit with everyone. That is not acceptable neither. So you want to be with those people or better yet, I should say, you want to listen to those people who are going to call you to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sabil of the Salaf. And they're definitely out there. There are many du'at in the West and around the world. Wulillah alhamd, Ahl Sunnah mawjud. Who call it the Kitab Allah was Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sabil uh, uh, Salaf as Salih. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan.